The crowning touch of any wedding day is that all-important cake. So Nick Watt is on the case, looking for clues to who will get to bake the cake of the century. He joins us again this morning from London. Did you crack the case yet, Nick? Not quite, but good morning, George. Today we are at the cake store in London, and I'm with Steve. He's very shy, so I will tell you he's one of the best cake makers in the world. He's been showing me how to use a piping bag, and we've been talking about what kind of cake Kate and William might have, and more importantly... Who's going to make it? This is the cake store's audition. This is what they could make if they get the regal nod. The uh, making of it and the delivering of it would be a bit daunting, but we'd certainly have a go. Daunting even for the biggest wedding cake maker in the land. They're not afraid of a chocolate-covered coronet, piping, ribbons, or top hats. They have 13 decorators on staff, but they are afraid of a royal wedding cake. In the responsibility of providing a cake for such a huge um, historic event, with all the crests and coats of arms and that sort of thing, something quite traditional looking, even if the inside isn't the traditional. So what kind of cake might it be? A fruit cake is more traditional as a wedding cake, although it's very heavy, very rich. And I think maybe a younger couple like Catherine and William would like something maybe like a chocolate fudge cake, something more um, modern. OK, but is the cake store making William and Kate's wedding cake? I wouldn't be allowed to say if we had been asked to bake William and Catherine's cake, I'm afraid. OK, let's try another guy. All news comes from the palace, I'm afraid. Oh, for goodness sake. Anyway, another option for William, a military man, is to choose a military baker for the big job. That's what his father Charles did. I'm talking about for his first wedding, the one to Diana. The cake is chock full of marzipan. This man made their cake, David Avery, a now retired Navy baker. I could tell my wife and family, but nobody else. He kept some as a souvenir. I had to go up to London to Buckingham Palace to see Diana and I had a blueprint. She wanted a wedding cake, not a monument. Can he share the recipe? No, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the recipe is, uh, it got from my mother. A stale slice sold recently on eBay for 1,500 bucks. David Avery is retired now, so he's not making the cake, but come on, one more try with the cake store. Have these guys got the gig? Uh, yeah, we'll let you know as soon as uh, we can. Which, with the secrecy surrounding this wedding, might be when it's already been eaten. Now, I'm not a trained baker. I'm more of a kind of gifted amateur. And I've, you know, come up with my own audition. I would like the commission myself. You see what I'm doing here? It's kind of a contemporary feel. You know, K8, that's Kate. I think I've got a chance. What do you reckon, Steve? <laughs> Um, I'm afraid I wouldn't give you a job at the cake store, Nick, but uh, it's not bad for a first effort. <laughs> All right, so what do you got? Well, I think I'd do something along these lines, a bit more refined, I think, than your, uh, your, is your go. This is chocolate fudge cake, which is um, a real nice, tasty English recipe. What do you think? I hey, mine looks better. Yours tastes better. <laughs> yeah, good eye. I'd go for this one if I was... Um, you don't have fruitcake under you there, Nick, do Thanks. you? <laughs> Sorry? Yours isn't a fruitcake, is it? Um, I'm not sure what's inside there. I didn't actually bake it. Um, fruitcake's more traditional. I reckon they'll go with something. If, listen, if I was them, I'd go with the more upmarket fudge. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, you're teasing us there, Nick. Okay, thanks very much. And you all can get more of Nick's take on the big day by checking out his digital show, Wedding Royale, at abcnews.com slash royalwedding.